the desire to keep growing, to adapt new ways of making and letting them go and keep learning and adapting other new ways of learning. My name is Simpiwe Nzube. I am a visual artist. I studied painting, sculpture. I dabbled with printmaking and many other forms of art making, including performance art, photography, video. And just recently, I've started exploring, collaborating with friends doing music. We are currently in my studio. It's in the fashion district of downtown LA. I grew up in South Africa. A lot of my teenage formation years were in this township called Masipumelele, which means we shall succeed. It's a very impoverished neighborhood that was a very difficult place to grow up in or to go to school in with very few resources to do art. But as the name of the community, we sort of live by that slogan of resistance and, and pushing through. In primary school, we all had this thing that everyone could draw. So it was already in the foundations of what we thought we were doing for play. Only when I was going to high school, my mom noticed that I really was like really interested in this thing. And she took it upon herself to go find another school in another township that was a two hour commute. There I had a teacher who really mentored us in terms of guiding us through both the things that we were going through and how we could use art to heal. It was a devastating period in my life because I lost my mom. And immediately, with the way of grieving, painting sort of gave me that space to, 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 to grieve, to, to mourn and to meditate. Painting is such an isolated practice. It demands so much solitude. I really latched onto it in a way that I haven't been able to let go. Painting still becomes the thing that draws me into studio. But drawing is a significant part of my practice. To look at other previous works, adapt them into drawing, by then things will already show slight distortions, slight differences, and then when I make a painting of that, it's sort of gone through like these mutations from the original. That when it gets to the canvas, if I were to paint it, it's got a life of its own. So from some of the literature that I've read, Zeke Simda, Gabriel Garcia Mekes, Haruki Murakami, I've noticed a thread that I relate to. There is this consistent dialogue about creating worlds that break through uh, barriers of expectations of what is normal, what is magical, what is reality, what is to be expected. And I feel that's something that I'm equally interested in and, and that's something that really draws me into magical realism. And not so much the, the interpretations of what actually that magical realism is and what is its history, but as a form of allowing the space for things unexplainable to happen. I mounted this exhibition called like the snake that fed the chameleon. The exhibition title was actually inspired by Audre Lorde's poem called Sostis. I took the last stanza from the poem which begins by saying, my skin is tightening, soon I shall shed it. Like a monitor lizard, like a remembered comfort at the moon rising, I will eat the last signs of my weakness, remove the scars of childhood wars, and dared to enter the forest whistling like a snake that fed the chameleon for changes. I shall be forever. So I took that last line and imagined a snake that had, you know, swallowed a chameleon for it to be able to adapt. What happens now when there are these two wild animals that are sort of engaging each other in ways to add to the strength of change. 
After having been in quarantine, uh, working on these pieces that had a lot to do about this new phase of becoming, of an excitement for a journey. I was very interested to see how people would equally relate and how they would experience the pieces. When you walk in, you feel like you are taken somewhere else. One of the things I was interested in was the erotic elements of the moment of becoming. It's been barren, it's been dry, um, it's been the pandemic, and then now you have these works that are coming out there, showing themselves in these moments of metamorphosis. You have a piece that I titled Dividuation, with the sort of sculptural hand dangling, and it's got this beautiful figure of someone that I was sort of thinking about who's from my home country. The plant that I've used as a motif in my work called the corpse flower. The plant is, is very beautiful, it's the largest flower. It takes about four to six years for it to blossom. And when it does, it releases off the stench. That's why it's called the corpse flower. It, it does that for a couple of days and then it dies out. This moment of becoming is like very short and has to be experienced sort of intensely. Playing around with elements of magical realism, I wanted to present this house that has been on a journey, flown through a passage from the township to Los Angeles, and it's arrived, it's presenting itself in its most authentic form. It's, 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 you see the residue, you see the dust, you see the door, but there's this consoling music inside that was a collaboration between Tabo Mukholo and Zimbi Nimakwe, two of my friends in South Africa. And the sound sort of gives you the idea of a haunted landscape, exploring elements of darkness, of rain, water, fire, with the rhythm that is equally optimistic, exciting, spacious, expansive. So you have the shanty town that sort of has this element of sacredness, uh, of memory, of my own personal memories of leaving and having grown in the house. And it's sort of taken this form and readapted into something that has capacity to fly on its own. You move along the exhibition, uh, you pass through an installation of corn stalks that have these gazing balls on top of them and the piece is called Secret of the Fields. I wanted to have this, this installation of these cornfields tie into some of the folklore I have read from Credo Mutua's books. He talks about this moment when a, a cyclone or a tornado comes through and hits the fields. The air would circulate around and push the fields to kind of make a certain movement. It was a, an important moment of the shamans communicating with this energy that is coming from distant places and how they would use specifically the cornfields in the center of it to tap into union with that spirit while it passes by. You move along after that piece and you are looking at another installation sculpture that I did that is called The Beast of No Nation. And there are these hands that are cast of my hands. <laughs> you know, they're holding onto the ropes, they're coming out of this beast, they are becoming part of it, but also it's as if this beast of no nation, as it is going through exploring this new terrain, it is equally recruiting and eating up bodies along the way. I wanted to present again another form of a, an angel uh, inspired by a flawed character in the hood that has been beaten off by life and has found himself on the street. But he's, you know, he's walking barefoot, he's, got, he's wearing these denim jeans, and has this tail of beaded diamond looking like stones that he found in the fashion district. So there's a precarious nature or a bricolage element, and it's an aesthetic that I'm also interested in in the rest of the work. Uh, and that's, I think ad adaptation means that. You take whatever is around you, piecemeal, stitch it together, weld it, and then you find beauty within the different 
textures of things that come from different parts of the world. So I just recently mounted my first museum show. It's titled Oracles of the Pink Universe. And the exhibition consists of eight works in total. There is a sculpture in the center of a protagonist figure that I call Begizwe. And Begizwe is a two-faced creature, a man that is playing on a role of a colonialist conqueror. So he is already crossing boundaries, riding a crocodile that he's domesticated, and this crocodile is sort of upside down. So already there are these elements of things that are starting to transcend beyond the normal. And then you have another sculpture I called Nguni Landing of, again, an adaptation of the dirty winged angel in full flight and very assured and confident and beautiful. And it's sort of hovering over my first mural painting, which I had done under the assistance of Dominique Victoria. Oracles of the Pink Universe is inspired by Hieronymus Bodge's painting, The Garden of Earthly Delight. And I was very interested in the ways in which Hieronymus Bodge created these landscapes that had these very wild architectural renderings of nature, creating my own cosmology and my own story that I'm telling in this exhibition. For me, it is a story of the post-apartheid South Africa, a story of how the colonial Europe came and conquered and violated exploited both the people and their land, and yet these people still show a very strong element of resilience and they've held on to their cultures, and that is the space that I come from. Mm -hmm.